Welcome to Salon Talks. I'm Ali Joseph, and I'm super excited and a little nervous because this is my first day back in the studio oh, since 2020. It's true. Isn't that crazy? Obviously, you know who this is. This is Emilio Estevez. I'm a little informal today, but it's been going well, and I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm shocked that you're back. I'm today. back. I've been in my attic. Not in the closet, that would be different. And I would tell you if I, uh, well, maybe I wouldn't have I worked. mean, I was already honored to be here, but now it's, it goes uh, up oh. uh, exponentially. So Thank here you. we yes. go. I, uh, yes, uh, first time back, glad to be out of my attic. So uh, you're here to talk about the re-release of your film, The Way. Yes. Um, which came out in 2011. That's right. Yeah, and uh, in which you star with your dad, Martin Sheen. I have a small and part. You have a small yes, part. I, well, I, I recur. We, sort we of do see a lot of you. A couple though. of flashbacks. A couple, yes, but yes, he is the star, is and the star. I simply serve him as the director and writer. Yes, and you and you wrote and directed this film the way, and um, it's in a limited release, correct? That's in right. The theaters. That's right. Yes. Uh, May sixteenth. May 16th. We're, we're out through Fathom Events. Okay, wonderful. So if you haven't seen the film, it's. 100% worth seeing. It's beautiful. We're going to get into it. Um, there's some some interesting things about how it was made. Mm. I think that I find interesting. And the film tells the tale uh, of a dad whose son has tragically died while uh, walking and hiking the famous Spanish Camino. And that is a uh, the Camino de Santiago, and it's a sort of sacred pilgrimage route of, through um, Spain, and it has great significance, often religious, for many people, especially Catholics. And so um, in the film, Dad decides to complete the route that his son was unable to finish and um, has a very introspective and emotional journey learning as well about himself. So, And also with a bit of the wry humor that you only get from a, a Sheen or an Estevez. Right. Or an Estevez, <laughs> Esta Sheen. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you. It is good to see you, too. Um, you were last here in 2019. We were talking about that a little bit before right. uh, for your film, The Public, That's right. about yeah. the library system in, in America. Um, how did you decide or why to re-release The Way? So the film had been sort of languishing in Nowheresville for a while. When it came out, it had a sort of a cult following. We were out on about 300 screens uh, total. We had done a national tour on a bus. I uh, loaded my dad and my son and a couple other folks onto a bus. We shrink wrapped the poster around this bus. We went to 35 cities over 50 days. We slept on the bus, we ate on the bus, and, uh, and we drove around and we screened the movie twice a night and did Q and A's after every screening, one uh, secular, one non, and the feedback was amazing. But we didn't really have the money. We didn't have the sort of the, the backing that we needed, the support to, to get it out there and keep it out there. The film did well for the limited release that it had. But then it kind of, it, 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 it fell into, um, well, it fell into, the company fell into bankruptcy. Yeah. And then uh, the movie found itself in a motion to abandon rights court mm -hmm. in Delaware. And I got a call uh, from a small uh, independent uh, distribution company who said, hey, you know, your movie's sitting in this courtroom. Um, do you need help rescuing it? And I said, sure. So I set about trying to get the rights back to it. I did. And uh, that, was a, that was a couple of years ago. So here we are. And, the, and that was during COVID. So now the movie sort of feels coming out of the pandemic. It feels like it's more relevant now with this audience where, where the planet is now than when we originally released it. And why do you say that? I think we're all having to hit the reset button. I think we're having to sort of figure out what's important, what isn't. Uh, I think we've been sort of living uh, within our tribes, and I think we've been, we were self-isolating before the mandatory uh, isolation, and so now it's like we're having to sort of look at each other as we're, we depend on each other mm -hmm. in ways that I think that we had forgotten. Mm -hmm. And I think with this film, it's about finding community. Mm -hmm. It's about finding yourself. But it is really about not being able to find yourself if you don't have community. And Martin's character discovers that during the course of the film. He, you know, he, he, he's doing, yet, as you mentioned, he's doing the, the Camino to honor his son, but he finds himself in the process. He doesn't want these other pilgrims to go along and travel with him, but they do. 
and he finds community. And, and through that, ultimately finds himself. And just as a point of reference in the earlier part of the film, and I won't give away too much, but your dad is a successful um, ophthalmologist and he uh, has friends, right? He's got golf buddies Country club and whatever. Guys, right, but right. like in a sense, he's still very isolated That's because right. in the film, you and your dad, he and his son do not have a, a close relationship right. for reasons that they don't tell you off the bat. Um, and so I think I did read that in pandemic, even not like now with it coming out again, um, there were a lot of people who found something in this film. So even in 2020, yeah, that's right. Um, and you had heard about that versus now it will be relevant in the ways that you say. That's absolutely right. And the feedback that we were given when people started going back out again, they, we would get emails, we would get posts on social. My dad, my dad's not on the computer, so he's all snail mail. And he, he would call me and says, I just got this amazing letter week after week after week. The, Basically, the underlying sentiment was, thank you for making this movie. It changed my life. Wow. And so I may never, I mean, I'll make more movies, I, I know that, but I may never make a film like this that actually has that kind of an impact on so many people that got up out of their chair, got up off their couch, and said, I'm going to do that. That's amazing. How, do you have any sense of how many people... Have re either well, obviously you don't know tens how many of thousands have reached have reached out to us. To I'm going to say, and those are the ones that actually did reach out to say it, they've gone and done the Camino. Done yeah. All right, so let's back up. This is amazing, first of all, because it's hard enough to get people out of their chair for anything, Tell me about it. Yeah. even at good cause, or even go nothing. to the movies <laughs> for that matter, selfish, right? Right. You go to the movies, right? Unless you got Nicole Kidman alone in an empty, <laughs> in alone for right. AMC right. for two years, she was trapped in there. That's, that was not my joke, I just took it. Um, but let's go back seriously and talk about the Camino for people who don't know um, about this pilgrimage. Can you describe sort of what it is and why it's significant? So it's, it, is, it started out as a predominantly Christian pilgrimage. Uh, the remains of St. James the Apostle of Christ are said to be interned in the cathedral at, uh, in, in Santiago de Compostela, which is in the north of Spain. Um, and as the crow flies, you have Madrid, above that you have Burgos, and then it's a straight line to Galicia, to the, to the, um, to, to the sea, really, is where, uh, uh, where Santiago de Compostela is. And so, um, pilgrims have been doing this journey for a thousand years. Uh, and you have po uh, you have popes and, and saints and kings and queens, and basically, uh, you, when you walk the Camino, you're walking with all of those spirits. Mm -hmm. You are inspired not just by your own journey, but you're inspired by those who came before you and who did this walk. And it's impossible to not walk in that history when you're on this ancient trail. And so people have been doing this, like I said, for, for a thousand years. And, and it has morphed into something a little touristy. People go out now for, to find adventure or to find a partner or to find... Uh, something. They're looking for something. It's not always a spiritual journey, but one thing is certain. However you start your Camino in saint jean pied de you do not finish it this, for the same reasons, nor do you finish it the same person. I mean, we will watch pilgrims arrive in Santiago de Compostela and drop to their knees and just weeping. Uh, not just because they completed it, but because they discovered something about themselves over those 40 days or longer that it took to get there. And it's, is it 68? How far is it's, it? It's uh, 500 miles, 800 500 miles, kilometers. 68. You can keep going. So, right. so Martin's character in the film, what he does is, you know, and this is not a spoiler alert, but my character dies on his first day out on the Camino. He's a world traveler. He sort of took the, he left Berkeley. He left the world of academia and he wanted to follow sort of the Margaret Mead style uh, um, a cultural anthropology uh, um, effort. And he's traveled the world, but he gets out on, this, on, on the trail in Santiago, uh, to Santiago, and he dies. First day out, he gets caught in a storm. He's ambitious, he's a little arrogant, and he dies. Martin's character goes to uh, collect uh, his remains instead of, of bringing the remains home, has them cremated, and does the Camino. 
So, um, so yeah, it's, um, it, it is a transformational, obviously very transformational for my character. <laughs> but yeah. certainly, certainly for his. Remember I mentioned the wry humor? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, that was very, very touching. I didn't get past, like I got to that m m grave marker mm -hmm. with the, and he's covertly with the ashes. And I, I was just like, why did I do the makeup? Yeah, it's, uh, it's that's um, rough. So what is the f your family's personal connection to the Camino and why you want to finish well, this film? So a couple, for a couple of reasons. First, my grandfather is Francisco Esteves, is who I, I uh, dedicate the movie to at the end. Um, Francisco uh, never saw his name uh, uh, on the screen. He never saw my father's name on the screen because my father had changed his name to Martin Sheen in 1958. When Francisco came finally to see to New York to see my father uh, on stage in The Subject is Roses in 67, he looked up the marquee and went, there it was, Martin Sheen. He went, mm. and my dad saw that and he thought, what have I done? I've, I've shamed my father. Anyway, so he, so when it was, when I started acting and when I started thinking about it as a profession, he said, "Don't change your name. Don't make the same mistake I did." Um, so anyway, that's a little backstory to why Spain and why uh, the story. Where my grandfather was born is a little town called Vigo, which is about fifty miles from Santiago de Compostela. So my dad had always heard of the, of the Camino, had always wanted to do it, but never took the time. In the summer of 2003, during the hiatus during West Wing, my son was working for him as, a, as an assistant. He was 19 at the time. My dad had planned a trip to Europe. He, he, he said, look, we don't have the time. We don't have the six weeks to do the full Camino. He says, I'm gonna go drive it. I'm just gonna go check it out. My son goes along. Then they're traveling the Camino and they're seeing this site and that site and they stop in this town called Burgos uh, for the night, which is a, it was like a Casa Rural where they take in pilgrims and they feed them and they house them while they're on their travel. And the innkeeper's daughter walks into the room. My son takes one look at her, falls in love, and they have been together ever since. Uh, they have a, a child now, my granddaughter, who's now, who just turned four. But that was sort of the first miracle uh, on the Camino that happened. So when my dad came home from the experience, uh, and my son came home briefly because he says, I'm going back to Spain <laughs> to study university. Right, so right, said, right. Um, he, uh, I, he, my dad began to say, well, how about doing a film in Spain? Mm -hmm. How about, uh, you know, he started sort of knocking around these scenarios. And I thought, yeah, well, let me figure this out. Let me, let me. And then it occurred to me that I had, when my son finally moved to Burgos, I thought, well, I kind of lost the son on the Camino. Maybe that's the, mm. maybe that's what the story is about. Maybe it's about a father who loses his son. And then, essentially, I wrote my own obituary. You went dark. <laughs> you went really dark. First, right? losing my son. I mean, he moved. Yeah, right? you lost him. I hope you did not. You know, like. No. No, right, so he's no. good. So he's good. Um, he's good. You have good. a child. It's all miracles, right. but that was your connection. All right, so so talk a little bit about. Well, you talked a little bit about the <laughs> the pilgrimages, and you know how how important and and what resonance that has, especially in Europe for for Catholics sure. and Christ Christians generally. Um, here, we've sort of dumbed down the human quest in America. Mm -hmm. At least I think so. You know, mm -hmm. in in um, yes, you've got your you know, wild folks, your hiker backpackers, your whatever, but Van many, life people. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah, Francis McDormand, brilliant in that role. Nomadland, yeah. you know, these a people bit of a who pilgrim, try right. to, yeah, that's a different kind. But it's all, most of it is very systemized here, right? It's like, well, I'm going to go and put on the back and do the thing. And right. it's not for, right. a, like, spiritual awakening. So do you think we as Americans need to take a pilgrimage amidst our busy I lives? Do. And would, um, why? I and where would, would change, you go? I think it would change our politics. I think it would change our media. I think, it would, I think if people actually took the time to go and, and travel to their interior and take the time to do that, I, I, I believe there, there would be massive change. Mm -hmm. The question is, when you go, can you keep it from being an Instagrammable moment? Because that's, that seems what it's all about now. Yeah. It's like, here I am, boom. You didn't enjoy the journey. You <laughs> right. didn't enjoy the moment. You had to take that photo 
for who? Who cares? Who cares? I mean, really. Yeah. It's, it's, so we've gone, we've gone so far away from doing things to improve ourselves. We're now doing things to impress others to the point where we're, we've just sort of lost the plot. Mm. In my opinion. Yeah. And then, no, I totally so, agree. I have so a teenage get... daughter, so I just have this argument all the time. And I, I'm not going to be popular, but I would wish that Snapchat would just crash and burn and, and go somewhere else, <laughs> go away. I know something like the whack-a-mole will pop up in its place, right. but right. it is this drug is very real with, with teenagers and their need to connect and feel that they have found a tribe, even if there's a superficiality because they, they, right. they don't yet have that perspective. Right. Um, but in any event. Uh, so how do we get there? I mean, and, and that's, I mean, but that's the conversation. Right. right. That's the conversation well, we, I think we that's, need to have. That's a start. Yeah. That's a start. And, and when this film first came out, you talked about how movies usually create, and this, this is how I encapsulated what I think you said, uh, sort of an overall dysmorphia mm. for viewers based on this idea of human perfection, right? right. Like uh, how how we have to look a certain way, eat a certain, you know, to uh, right. eat, to look a certain way, not to be healthy, but to, you know, um, photograph ourselves a certain way, filters and so on and so forth. Why is your film different? What is that message? That message is different. So you've talked to enough directors and producers and filmmakers and actors and they will, and, and I'm sure they will tell you the horror stories when they sit in a studio's executive's office and they're talking about a specific mm -hmm. plot or story. They want to talk about the character arc. Mm. over a two hour or a three hour film, that character has to change and the character has to go from here. And okay, how many friends do you have that you've known for 20 years? Many. How many of them really changed over the course of that 20 years? I mean, really changed. How many of them totally surprised you with their transformation where they've made a full character arc per the studio? Oh, none. None. <laughs> I knew none. what you were looking for. I was no, like, wait, none of them. that's good, right? Yeah, okay, or not, so, but so, it is, yeah. But the movie is about how we are and should be okay with being exactly who we are. Mm -hmm. We know when at the end of the movie, this is not a spoiler alert, but the Dutchman says, you know, I needed a new suit anyway. Mm. <laughs> she was at You'll the, see what he means. And, and Sarah, the Canadian, played yeah. by uh, the lovely uh, uh, Cara, Deborah Kara Unger, she's not stopping smoking. No intention of stopping smoking. She's going to be exactly who she is, mm -hmm. no matter what. So the Camino has transformed people. The journey has transformed them, but not in the ways that are obvious. So they may start out as being somewhat stereotypical characters, but the, the end game, the mean, the, the, it's the end, where they finally arrive is not, so far from being stereotypical because there is not the character arc that the studios all want to see. These people are exactly the same. So you talked a little bit about in, you know, in some original interviews for the film, and, and I, I just wanted to touch on this, um, how little tech, we're still, I'm on a theme, you know, ha was used, 16, right? Was we shot, shot super shot. 16, mm -hmm. we all, no, all natural light. And I love this as a like atavistic photographer, you know, I love a hard body camera, I still shoot on Tri-X for, if you're not a photo nerd, you know what that is, but right. you know, I don't like flash photography, I love the iPhone, sorry, that's sure. not a pitch for Apple, because oh. it's easy, right? But and the photos are great. there's something about that like rich grainy and so I had read that already um, in an interview you did in, originally but then I watched the film and I could hear myself think because it's not just like shoved in dialogue as right. you mentioned there's right. a lot of it's scored yes but there's a lot in my opinion there's a lot of quietness mm -hmm. because the person, because your dad and your dad in the film is on a journey, mm -hmm. and he has to reconcile his own thoughts and emotions. And that's right. Was that some, that's something, I assume, that's something you put some thought to? Oh, yeah. It's, it's about the steps you take. I loved it. It was you quiet. Know, talk about a 12-step program. <laughs> you know, this is a, a million-step program to get to the self, to get to your truth. And this was, this was intentional. And, and you've seen the movie, it's swimming in grain. Mm. It's swimming in grain. The whole it movie, I mean, you can see it's just like you can, and, and the, the DP is a Spanish DP, Juan Mi Esperos, who, uh, who moved from Spain to Brooklyn, moved, met his wife, uh, his now wife, 
on the Camino during the film. She was actually running uh, footage, uh, exposed film, uh, to uh, Madrid. Uh, so she was a production assistant and running the film every night mm -hmm. to Madrid and, and coming back to wherever we were on the Camino. They met, they fell in love, they had two children, they moved to Brooklyn. He comes to Cincinnati to, uh, to, to scout locations for the public, decides, I love Cincinnati, it's much more affordable than New York. I'm moving my family to Cincinnati. He says to me, one of me says, uh, Amelia says, every time I work with you, my life changes. Mm. And he's another miracle on the Camino. He's a guy who's now in his 50s and has this amazing life in Cincinnati. My uh, uh, first AD met the costume director, or the costume, a costumer on the film. She, they married, have two children now, in addition to my son and his wife. So there were all of these amazing miracles, all of these moments of, of genuine love uh, that were born out of this film that you just, it's, you just can't ignore it. The movie had a magical impact on so many people and continues. And now it will have a whole new audience. Indeed. And we've added this uh, Rick Steves I uh, saw footage, that. which is, you know, he's a mad genius. Uh, my girlfriend Jackie had came up with this crazy idea. She said, let's call Rick. Let's email him. Let's just reach out to him. I said, do you have his number? She says, no. I said, well, surely he'll respond to you. And I said, okay. I wrote the email, send, you know, let's have another beer. He calls the next night. And he says, I'd love to be a part of it. Let's keep talking. We got a, I took my parents, we got on a train, we took the Amtrak on our own pilgrimage to see Rick Steves, <laughs> to Edmonds. You have uh, to well, use one of those toilets <laughs> and sleep on that. Bunk. Oh no, no, it's impossible. It's, it's, it's tight in it's there. It's very tight. It's cozy. It is. It's so a we, euphemism. We went to Edmonds, Washington, and we shot this added footage. Yeah. And I was kind of the, I was the, um, the moderator. Mm -hmm. And I sat between Rick and Martin and asked them questions, and it was a great dialogue about faith and about family, about pilgrimage. And Rick's mission, which is A, why we travel, and B, the road is church, mm -hmm. and, and how pilgrimage is really the first church. Well, you guys are scrappy, I'll say that. We're that. There's none of that We're Hollywood that. stuff. No. Shrink wrap a bus and like drive 50, what is it, was it 50? It was 50 days, 35 cities. Good Lord, yeah. sleeping on it. I'll see, I'm sure it was, it was a amazing. nice bus. You know, it not was too okay. Stinky, we, it, was, it was a good bus. It was a good tour bus. It was a good tour bus. But that, and now you're going to Washington, you're taking the Amtrak. Yeah. So never let it be said that the Sheens are not, and the Estevez are not method folks. Hey, man. It's all know, method. We, we, we talk the talk and walk the walk. They and, do. And, you know. All right. Well, now we're going to tell people to head out and on May 16th, where, how long will it be in theaters? So it is a, it is a one day event. Oh, in, one day. In, Get there. On Tuesday, May 16th with Fathom Events, but then there'll be a month where they run it uh, on a, it's like a streaming platform for one month. And then after the streaming platform, we'll be back on all the, you know, all the usual suspects with Amazon and Okay. Apple and all of those. So. All right, so you will be able to find this imminently. And you haven't been able to, by the way, which makes this whole experience unique. We took it down from Apple. We took it down from uh, Amazon. We sort of stripped it away from, from view, essentially, to be able to do this re-release and reboot. I love it. It's a beautiful film. Thank you. And it's really Thank you. lovely to hear how much it's positively impacted people. But that is the way. It is the you way. like what I did there? I, yeah. Yeah. All right. This is, of course, Emilio Estevez. He likes it. Uh, he's just <laughs> giggling over there. Um, I missed the studio. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, and welcome for, back. And for coming welcome back. back. This is great. Uh, th this is uh, Emilio Estevez, of course, and his film is being re released The Way, which he wrote and directed and uh, stars his dad, Martin Sheen. And I'll be back to talk to you for the sequel. Oh, my God. A sequel? Yeah. yeah. Headed off to Spain to start doing R and D, uh, and for real? Yeah. Oh, you're serious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought that was. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. We we rediscover Tom. Uh, he's. Uh, I'll just. I'll, I'll give you just a brief. Oh, a spoiler. Spo he he's be he's become fully evolved. He's become the real citizen of the world. He's now working with Doctors Without Borders, Medicine No Frontiers. Amazing organization. And they're donating. he is in Niger in uh, Nigeria, and he is performing cataract surgeries and in a remote village, and a C-130 plane comes in with supplies for the village, uh, surgery supplies, and mail. And in the drop is the Irishman's book. And in the book are some absolutely horrifying revelations, and Tom has to leave the village to go find him for the next journey. 
Oh my, so I wasn't it. expecting that at all. It's a way chapter Thank two. Thank you for sharing. So off we go and uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll get this thing up and running and I'll be back. Please. Yes.